we have the Cancer Genome Atlas, mm -hmm. and, and Yelena, can you tell us a little bit more about what that's about and how do, how do we apply that? Sure. So the Cancer Genome Atlas is an effort through the NCI to develop a roadmap, an atlas of different solid tumors. And, you know, there's uh, an effort uh, to do this in esophageal and gastric cancer, which the gastric cancer paper was published first. And recently we published uh, the, the joint esophageal adenocarcinoma squamous cell, but also incorporating the gastric cancer. Uh, data into it. And so the first uh, iteration of this analysis demonstrated that within gastric cancer, gastric adenocarcinoma, there are four different molecular subtypes. And these are, you know, pristine, relatively early stage tumors that have not been exposed to chemotherapy or radiation and really, uh, you know, are not exactly translatable to the metastatic patients that you see in your clinic. So these are un early stage, earlier stage tumors. And what we saw that among the four different subtypes, MSI patients, microsatellite and stable and EBV, Epstein-Barr related um, uh, tumors were uh, the most on, you know, PDL1 uh, positive and uh, likely you know, susceptible to immune checkpoint inhibitors. In that cohort of patients, however, the, the uh, incidence of those tumors were likely overestimated as there cont continued to be relatively favorable prognosis in early stage to, uh, cancers. And so in that sense, that there's uh, that data I'll put in quotation marks because for your metastatic patient, it may not be as commonly um, uh, seen. The most common tumors that we see in U.S. and you know going back in West in the West, going back to Ian's comment, that it is very uh, complicated. It's not just about you know the type of surgery you do or the tumor location. It's also about the molecular characteristics of the tumor. And so in U.S., we tend to have more aneuploid or chromosomally unstable tumors. They're 53 mutant, they're aggressive. And I've had patients who are undergoing quote unquote screening for endoscopies and just had a normal endoscopy. And a year later, they already have a T3N1 tumor. And it's because within six to eight months, the tumor grew quickly. And um, generally those tumors are associated with chemotherapy resistance and aggressive tumor biology. Um, in, in the H. pylori or uh, sort of the endemic type of gastric cancer, generally those are distal tumors um, that are le less, you know, aneuploid uh, uh, driven and could be potentially, uh, you know, less complicated to target. And then, you know, to Manisha's point, the signet ring cell or the diffuse gastric cancer is a completely different entity. Um, it's very difficult to pick up sometimes on endoscopies. They tend to grow on top of things and sort of, you know, into uh, forming a mass. So they're, so this is linitis plastica approach. And uh, genomically, they're very quiet, at least on the DNA level. So it's something, you know, you know there may be clot in, uh, inhibitors as a one mechanism of treatment, you know, targeting row A pathway, uh, although that's a big question mark. They're, they're, they're a big challenge. Within esophagus cancer, one thing we know is that squamous cell tumors are a completely different entity and actually phenotypically and, and, and genomically are more similar to the head and neck, badly behaving head and neck cancers. But we could uh, t target the esophageal adenocarcinomas and the G-junction adenocarcinomas together. And speaking of the GE junction, you know, Ian, you were talking about educating your gastroenterologist. I mean, certainly with this new emergence of GE junctional cancers being so prominent, you know, what are we telling our gastroenterologists in terms of helping us classify um, these different tumors? I mean, certainly, you know, we hope that on, a, on, a, on their standard reporting of endoscopy that they would tell us where the junction is. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, endoscopically, although I do actually see some um, not inconsistent, but between the uh, imaging of what radiologists call uh, the tumor where it's at the junction versus what the gastroenterologists say that that is uh, whether the tumor is the junction, whether it extends proximally or distally, there can be some differences. But certainly, I think nowadays, especially when we uh, plan for multimodality treatment for for localized disease with the surgeons and chemotherapy and radiotherapy, it is very important for our gastroenterologists to accurately document for us the, uh, the location of the junction or the location of the tumor relevant re uh, relative to, to the junction. 
And this is the CWIRT classification, yeah. right? And we're seeing this more and more in clinical trials that they actually want to know, you know, is it the top, middle, or yeah. bottom of the yeah. GE junction that might give us a, a little bit of a difference.